touched a button that I shouldn't have. I hope I haven't triggered a live stream. Harry? What? Harrison? Yeah. I think I may have triggered your live stream a little bit early, buddy. You better get down here. Yeah, I, 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 I shouldn't be on this thing. You should be on this thing. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> Happy April Fools, Happy everyone. April Fools. Welcome to the live stream. <laughs> well, folks. Well, Welcome to folks. Harrison's live stream. Anyways, we've already got a uh, train all set up here. We're going to be running some stuff in a moment. Hope you all enjoyed the little ruse there. Frito TV, welcome. Modern Model Trains, hello. How's it going? Not too bad. I'm happy we're finally into April. Can you run a River Rossi? Yeah, we can make that happen. Looks like the Santa Fe is connected from its cars over there. Just uh, quickly set things to live chat here, so hopefully I don't miss any messages. Do we run any daylight? I don't have a working uh, daylight locomotive at the moment. Can you run the B class? Yeah, we can make that happen. We'll let this one go around for uh, a few loops and then we'll, we'll get some other pieces of equipment on. Can you run the pair of unstoppable locomotives? Yeah, I think we could probably make that happen. We'll run the Australian locomotive first though. Tavin Boy, hi SMT, really big fan of your videos. Oh, thank you. Can you also install a decoder on the daylight and get them fixed? The daylight locomotives actually do have a decoder, they just don't run. But I bought a brass daylight locomotive, it's still waiting in its box, so eventually I'll uh, open that up and uh, we'll have hopefully a working daylight. Brass engines tend to be a little bit fickle, but... Uh, I think I'm probably more knowledgeable on working on a brass locomotive than a Bachman. Gerald Rite, welcome to the live stream. Yep, how many trains will you run off the layout tonight, Harrison? Well, off the layout, hopefully none. Um, as for on the layout, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe we can get like three or five of them going. Well, do you, why do you always have to turn on slow mode? I turn on slow mode just because uh, some people uh, repeat their comments and or they uh, comment a lot of stuff. So there's, it just makes it a little bit harder for the the quieter people who only leave you know the odd comment to to speak up. Have you heard about the Canadian Pacific Kansas City Southern merger? Yeah, I have. I'm uh, surprised that actually went through. SMT, I've been listening to Rush a lot. If I recall, you had a few of their songs on one of your YouTube playlists. I think they're a great band. Yes, I did include them in my Ultimate 80s Rock playlist. Uh, huge fan of Rush. I think they make terrific music. Well, Bachman locomotives are a lot more fragile than brass, so I don't blame you. Look at them the wrong way and bam, broken gears. Yeah, pretty much. How's the Hershey's factory going? Pretty good. Uh, I haven't made any progress on it in the last couple weeks, but I'm hoping to get it done by uh, June 16th, I believe it is. So uh, we'll see how that goes. The reason I picked June 16th is because that's the day that they actually opened the real factory in 1963. And since we're in 2023, it's now going to be the 60th anniversary. So I think that that's, I don't know, just kind of a, a cool day to have the model open. Anyways, I'm just going to go quickly uh, grab the Australian B-Class locomotive, then we'll get that going. Followed by some sort of River Rossi. Do you have any Iowa interstate engines? I don't think I do. Cedar Point Kid, I recently bought an old kit-bashed car from 1947. It's all die-cast wood and has some quartz as a load. That's really cool. Gavin James, the subdivision is playing on my spotlight right now. Oh, Spotify right now. It's got to be one of my favorites by Rush.
Rails of Ontario, somebody gave me an Athern Genesis Rio Grande 4664 Challenger locomotive with DCC sound. Well, that was very generous. Bachman trains, uh, Dom <laughs> Bachman Thomas and friends be like, switches handle fine, diamond crossings derails all the time. Run one of the camelbacks. Yeah, we could probably make that happen. Train Man 1993, hello, hello. And we're gonna switch up to uh, DC power for a moment here. Greetings from Syracuse, New York, hello. DV Tech, welcome to the live stream. I wonder if I should run this locomotive in the opposite direction, because if I recall correctly, this engine had a bit of a derailing problem last time. So maybe if we run it the other way, it won't do that. Is $5 for a brass Tenshoto GP9 cheap enough? Absolutely. Anything brass, uh, if it's, I don't know, under $30, I'd say you've got yourself a good deal, even if it's kind of junked. Um, the, the brass community is interesting. They're, they're willing to pay a lot for, uh, for just about anything. I mean, I, I don't blame them. Brass engines do look pretty nice, but performance-wise, unless you have the skill, I don't find they're usually all that great in terms of running. Anyways, let's see if we can get this V-Line locomotive going. Yes, there we are. I forgot that engine's getting power, too. Got all the orange engines out. Did you know that Canadian National still has a Bud RDC? I know because I saw it. Well, do they still use it? Greetings from Liverpool, UK. Been following your channel for a couple of years. Very entertaining and informative. Oh, glad to hear it. SMT, what's your favorite steam train? Well, either the Milwaukee Roads Hiawatha, the original Atlantic locomotive, or this uh, Swedish E2 locomotive. As far as Canadian engines go, I think I would probably pick number 6060. As far as American steam goes, uh, I'm going to have to go with the Daylight. Well, the Hiawatha is American steam, but American steam that still exists. CN still uses the RDC. It's a track inspection unit. Okay, yeah, it's maintenance of the way. That makes sense. You should get a 3D printer and print another Hiawatha. That's a good idea. I gotta say, the Australian locomotive seems to perform uh, pretty well in this direction. It doesn't have the derailing issue, so that's interesting. Looks pretty cool pulling those intermodal cars, too. Greetings from Kent, England. Been watching for a while now. Discovered you whilst watching Sam's Trains. Oh yeah, Sam's Trains is a pretty good channel. Do you have any British diesel locomotives? I don't think I have any working British diesels. Um, I, I did a video a couple months ago buying a whole bunch of British locomotives and there were some diesels included in that lot. So uh, if I can get those going, there will be some, but uh, at the moment, not really. I do, well, actually I do, because I have the uh, Inner City 125, which is, I think, the world's fastest diesel electric, actually. So, I stand corrected. Anyways, it looks like this has finally jumped the track, so I think we'll get something else going here. I guess we'll re-rail this just to pull the train back to the front, but uh, we'll see what's up next. I know people wanted to see the Unstoppable locomotives run, so we'll probably run those next, followed by some sort of Riverossi. And I think that that should be pretty fun. Have you seen the Mighty Mantua Might? It's a super cool engine based off the Plymouth CR4. I can't say I have. How's Nerfcat doing and the British Collection? Nerfcat's doing great. As for the British Collection, I find every engine I dig out of there ends up being a lot of trouble. Whoever had those engines before me definitely knew what they were getting rid of because... Almost all of them are, are junked, but um, 
you know, I'm up for a challenge. So I think many of them will ride the rails once again someday. But like that uh, die cast locomotive that I worked on the other day, that thing was so tricky. I really didn't think it was going to be that hard because it looked like the motor was still going. So I was like, oh, it will be fine. Cracked it open. And man, was that a lot of trouble. Roz, hi, SMT. I met you at the OVA or flea market. Uh, I'm the old guy with the Australian accent. Big thanks to you and your videos. You got me into this hobby at the tender age of 60 years old. Cheers. Oh, well, thank you so much for the comment. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know uh, which your account is linked to, like uh, which one you were, but uh, yeah, it was uh, good to meet you at that. Uh, there was a lot of uh, wonderful people at that show. It was uh, really nice getting to meet a lot of people that watch the videos locally. Do you have a Union Pacific 1996 Southern Pacific Heritage Unit? ST70ACE. I cannot say that I do. Hey, SMT, how's it going? Oh, pretty well. Have you ever ridden on the nickel plate uh, 765? I don't, I don't think I have. Is the 765 even still in operation? I thought they were having some problems with that locomotive. Now this dummy engine was causing a lot of problems in uh, a previous live stream, so if it does that again, I think I'm just going to remove it, just run the and stop the locomotive on its own. I'll try it out here. I'm already off the tracks. I definitely need to do some more work on these engines. They've been having a lot of issues lately. Ottawa Model Rail Fan! And there's somebody I haven't seen in a while. Hey Harrison, how have you been recently? Oh, things have been pretty good. How have you been? Anyways, we're, we're gonna try one more time to get these things uh, coupled up. I think this is probably gonna be the last time tonight that we run these locomotives just because uh, they're clearly in need of a lot more maintenance than I thought. I mean, they were causing issues in the previous live stream and uh, so far they're not off to a great start. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. What have you been dreaming to buy recently? Train or accessory? Um, it's not anything I'm really on the lookout for. Something that I want to start working on is making the uh, train from the show called The Trailer Park Boys, which is called the Swayze Express. Um, but uh, that's that's really my only goal at the moment. I've got plenty of projects on the go, so it'd be really good just to get most of those done. This is out of the picture. Hey SMT, I went to a train show today and got a free nickel plate road hopper. I also got a BNO 040 for $12. It was very cool. Thanks for getting me into this hobby. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Sounds like uh, quite a deal. Okay, let's see if we can get this thing to haul this around for one lap. Are you going to be doing another winter train challenge this year? Oh, the Christmas display contest? I mean, yeah, that's a ways out, but uh, I don't see why I wouldn't do another one. As long as everybody's having fun with it, honestly, I'll keep doing them. Okay, I think that's it for the AWVR train, because uh, I think I need to overhaul this thing. So we'll run... Uh, a River Rossi engine of some sort. Maybe the cab forward. That's a popular choice. And, uh, yeah, I'll sort this one out behind the scenes at some point. Because, uh, this is just having way too many problems. Could you run a Spirit of 76? Yeah, we could do that. i run the River Rossi first, though, because, uh, I've been promising that one for a while. Of 
so we'll have to go out and find a tender for it at some point. Harrison, are you going to fix any more trains? Oh yeah, there's tons of stuff to restore. I mean, uh, everything on that shelf over there is uh, up for restoration. And uh, I also have a couple boxes of equipment which are in need of some repair. Plus, I just bought a whole bunch of uh, trains at the train show. So, uh, yeah, I don't think that the repairs are, are going to run out anytime soon. All right, I found this Southern Pacific locomotive. Unfortunately, it has a little bit of a unconventional tender. Uh, the coupling is no good, so I think I'll just... Uh, I don't know, we'll probably push these cars off the main line and, and just run it on its own. Do you have any Bachman locomotives you can run? Yeah, yeah, there's quite a few. Anyways, let's get the cab forward all set up here. Can you run a F unit with the intermodal train? Yeah, we could probably make that happen. I used your Tyco restoration video that include broken gears with the shaft fix. Bring my Tyco chassis system F unit back to life. Great stuff. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Oh, I'm glad to hear that worked. I mean, that repair is uh, a little bit iffy. Usually I just replace the blocks now, but um, you know, if you want to get a little bit of extra life out of those blocks, sometimes it can last a few years. Can you run the metal New York Central F units? Yeah, we could definitely get those out. Somebody was requesting that I run an F unit too, so maybe we could have that pull the intermodal train. That might be cool. Having some uh, 1950s era equipment hauling stuff around. I think we've had another derailment. I'm kind of not surprised about that. Oh well, let's go get those 50s units out. Do you have any Berkshire locomotives? I've got two Berks. Unfortunately, neither of them run at the moment. Now, as for the New York Central unit, here is the A unit. Let's see if we can find the B unit. Well, I found the B unit. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't have a coupler, so we're not going to be able to haul this train. I'm kind of thinking that we should just get this intermodal set off the main line and uh, run some other equipment, just because uh, somebody's also requesting that I run the Inner City 125, which certainly does not have compatible couplers with this train, so it might just be a little bit easier. Can you run the HST? Yeah, we'll run the HST. I'm just going to get these intermodals off the main line, and then we'll, uh, we'll have some fun running some different trains. I find these are just being all... A little too temperamental at the moment. Sam and Ben tuning in from Erie, Pennsylvania. Welcome.
Okay, let's get some stuff on here now. Do you have number uh, 611 to run? If so, can you run it? I don't have uh, number uh, Western Maryland, I think it is, 611. Hey, SMT, I went to a train show today and almost got a complete Fleshman set, just missing the track for $40. I also got an Atherin Hustler and a Tyco C630. Wow, sounds like uh, quite the haul. Yeah, $40 for uh, a Fleshman set doesn't seem too bad, especially for a vintage set like that. Some of those can go for a lot of money. So hopefully this thing will start. I did a repair video on it. Uh, I don't know, maybe five months ago. I almost find it hard to believe that at one point this would be the only equipment you could buy. Well, it started up, that's a good sign. Should go forwards. Sounds to me like something is derailed. I guess not. Well, there she goes. Current draws all in check, so uh, I think we're in business now. Hello SMT, I went to a model train show in Green Bay and got some new engines, a Cato SD40-2, a uh, Snoot BNSF 2 Atherns, and a CNW SD70, I think, as well as a GP38, not entirely sure though. What was the first old locomotive that you ever bought? Um... First used engine I ever bought, I think, was a Lifelike Santa Fe. I mean, I inherited my ma uh, grandmother's Hiawatha back when I was, well, I don't know, maybe six years old. So I, I guess that might count. I don't know. Hello from Richmond, B.C., just outside of Vancouver. Welcome. Things are being as jump the track. Just finished tinkering with my Brass Royal Hudson, and yeah, now it runs like a treat. No shorts or derailments. $325 well spent. Well, that's good to hear. Can you run the go train with the daylight? Uh, the, the daylight doesn't run. I have to get the brass one out of the box and figure out what kind of work that one needs, but I do not have a working daylight right now, so. I'm going out to see my family soon. Oh, sorry, the comment just moved away. I'm going out to see my family soon. One of them wants to get into the hobby. What would you recommend for a beginner? The easiest way to get into the hobby would just be to buy a, a budget train set of some sort. So maybe just go on Amazon or to your local hobby shop and just pick up the cheapest Bachman set they have. I would personally avoid the bigger Bachman sets because I just don't feel like they're as good a value for your money. Bachman's not the best manufacturer, but they do make the cheapest train sets. Uh, if you're in the mood to spend a little more money though, uh, get them a Walter set. Those are definitely higher quality. I have a 449 Daylight in the NW Library and an Atherin Blue Box SD40. I got a River Aussie Big Boy that's causing short circuits. The motor works fine, but it is very weird. I think I can hold the cab up and it runs when I set it down. It cuts out powder. power. What could be the issue? I'm pretty sure that under the cab, um, you know, that's where the drawbar for the electricity comes in from the tender. So I'd check to see what that might be getting into contact with, because if it's touching the wheels or anything, if that drawbar is bent, it could be causing a short circuit. 
I'm pretty sure something similar happened with my cab forward locomotive. And I think I had to wrap the drawbar with some electrical tape. So I don't know, go watch that video. It might have some helpful information. Anyways, uh, I'm not entirely sure what we should run next. Uh, I think I did say I was gonna run the inner city 125. So I guess we'll run that for the meantime and then we'll find out what everybody else wants after that. Oh, here's one for all the viewers from across the pond. Derailed in the same spot. I wonder if that switch is opened up. As well, a matter of fact, it did. I love those inner cities. They're really cool looking locomotives. Santa Fe locomotive has successfully rid itself of all the equipment it was hauling. Hey, SMT, I have my setup with a pair of manual switches currently laid out on my carpet because they don't have a table yet. The trains wobble through the switches. Is that because of the carpet? It might be. Um, record, running trains on a carpet is generally not a very good idea just because the little fibers can actually get caught up in the drive and it can mess up your locomotive's gearbox or motor. So uh, yeah, I I would just buy a piece of plywood. Like if, if you can't have a, a layout, you know, I get that, but plywood, you can find scrap plywood pretty cheap. So see if you can find yourself a sheet big enough for your track and set that down on the floor. If not, run it on hardwood or um, tile, anything that's not carpet, basically. I have a serious question. Could you help me fix a Pennsylvania F unit? I have, I've almost got it running, but it won't go around my layout. Turns out the rear truck doesn't pivot and I don't know why. If you wanna contact uh, scrumptiousmodeltrains at gmail.com, I can uh, certainly help you try to fix that. How well does code 83 track work with code 100? Um, you, they are, I guess, cross compatible, but you're gonna have to have some sort of a piece in between them because you can't just go from code 83 to code 100 because the, obviously the code 100 has a thicker rail. So there'll be a bump in the track and that could cause some funny stuff to happen. So I'm sure somebody sells a conversion rail, like one piece of track, which goes from code 100 to code 83. So uh, have a look for that if you have to mix the two. Personally, I would just go with code 100 all the way because you can run more equipment on it, but uh, I do understand some people like code 83 for realism. Running trains on carpet doesn't have very good stability and probably squishes with the weight on it. Yeah, I'm sure that could be a problem too. SMT, what's the oldest locomotive that you run? Is it the 83-year-old train you fixed up? Probably so, yeah. I don't think I've ever run anything older than that. I did have that 100-year-old uh, Lionel, which uh, belonged to my friend, but that was O-scale, so um, I don't know if that counts. Speaking of the 83-year-old uh, locomotive, I fixed that thing up the other day, but I never got to test it out, so I guess we'll try to run that. I don't know if this thing is going to work. I just threw some uh, crazy glue on the gear, which was slipping. 
My Kato locomotives run just fine on carpet. They will for a while. Uh, it's, it's not a matter of can you run uh, trains on carpet. It's more of a question, should you run trains on carpet? And uh, I would say don't. Um, I mean, if you're willing to open up the gearboxes and clean out all the carpet fibers, you'll be fine. But uh, I've, a lot of locomotives I've seen um, have gotten really screwed up because people did that. I didn't start. Oh yeah, there we go. Well, it could probably use a drop of oil, but uh, yeah, it looks like the Yellowstone lives on. Okay, very nice. I think I'll stop running that for the sake of everybody's hearing, but I'm glad to see that it's at least running. Mike Merritt's welcome to the live stream. How have you been? Until you get a table, cut up old cereal boxes into strips and put that under your track. Yeah, exactly. Even cardboard, whatever. You know, just put something that doesn't have little fibers sticking out of it. My oldest is a seven-pole Varney from the 50s. I've got one of those. Um, I think it's called the Lindsay Supermotor. They're quite sought after. Controller Packers, welcome to the live stream. Anyways, uh, first request I see for something, we'll, uh, we'll get it out on the layout just as long as it runs. My layout is the classic 50 by 80 passing loop design by A Flyer. Yes, I run S gauge shoot me. <laughs> oh, I got an S gauge person in here. I don't hear about that scale. Um, 50 by 80 square feet though, that's pretty impressive. If the gear is slipping, I would recommend giving it something that the plastic gear will grip on or grab onto. I don't think the gear is slipping. Um, I think it just needs some adjustment. Can you run the 442 Atlantic? Yeah, we can definitely run the, uh, the Hiawatha. Not the 50s one, but uh, I've got this... Modern Fox Valley one, which I'd be happy to get out on the layout. I haven't run that in a while. Try not to drop it here. No, no, no. Inches meaning four by eight. Oh, I see. I was like, yeah, somebody must have a like a warehouse if they're if they've got a layout that's. 50 by 80 feet. I wish I had a layout that was 50 by 80 feet. Can you imagine what you could build on something like that? Isn't that the dream? If I ever won the lottery, that's probably what I'd do. Just buy out a warehouse, turn it into a massive train club. That's a good question. If you had a million dollars that you could only spend on your layout, what would you all buy? I would love to hear the answers. All right, that's all looking pretty good. Let's get this thing on the road, the Milwaukee road. Oh. I did not make it very far. Let's try it in the other direction. If I had a million dollars, I'd buy it already finished layout. <laughs> Hey, SMT, are you ever going to get any brass locomotives? I get that they're more expensive, but usually they're far more realistic. Well, it depends what you're comparing the realism for. I wouldn't call a brass locomotive uh, more realistic than a uh, modern Rapido. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to buy some more uh, brass locomotives. As a matter of fact, I was talking earlier about how I bought this uh, brass um, GS4 Daylight locomotive. So that's going to be something to work on in the future. Apparently it doesn't run, but we'll, we'll see about that. 
Just don't think I'm gonna have as many problems as I have with all my Bachman engines. Cedar Point, I'd, if I, you know, I'll start the question with uh, the, I'll start the answer with the question. If I had a million dollars, I'd build a layout and buy all the River Aussie locomotives, plus build a custom brass aerodynamic screwdriver coaster with a control panel. That's an interesting idea. SMT, how common is it to find U.S. change in your pocket? Very common. I go on a lot of trips to the States, so usually I have lots of $1 bills. There was one floating around down here a couple months ago. I don't know where that's gone off to, but uh, yeah. Uh, I've got a question for you, SMT. How is the new HO layout coming along? Also, is it spring... Also, it's spring break for me right now. The new layout's coming along uh, quite well. I haven't done anything since the last video, but there is progress in a sense because uh, I got all these new buildings for it. And uh, when I was at the train show, I bought some more switches, which are from Pico. They look to be in great condition. So I'll be able to add a switch right here so that trains which go on the inner circuit can head back out onto the main line, which is something a lot of people suggested. It's a very good idea. So... Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. Does Canadian money really smell like maple syrup? It kind of does. Um, I wouldn't say it's identical, but it, it, ha it has a very distinctive sweet smell to it. Have you heard of Classic Model Trains? He does exactly what you do. I don't know if I've seen that channel or not. The name kind of rings a bell. Hey, SMT, how much would you pay for a Bachman Spectrum HO Erie Lackawanna SD40 diesel with the box, not including shipping? Not sure how much to pay for it. Well, it depends. If it's a modern one, it's probably worth about $50. Um, if it's one of the ones from the 80s, it's worth, I don't know, $15 on the high side. Those 80s Bachmans are practically worthless. Um, I wouldn't pay much for one. Can you run a North Pacific locomotive after the Burlington Northern? Uh, North Pacific, I don't know if I have one of those. Do you have any Ontario Northland locomotives? I do have one somewhere, let's go get it. I was storing it on this shelf. I don't know where it's gone. Hmm. It can't be that far because I was running it on a previous live stream. I don't know. Bro, watch one day SMT will upload a video about fixing a brass eerie triplex. I would love to get my hands on a triplex. I think it would probably be a nightmare to work on if it was broken, but uh, man, that would be that would be the dream engine to have. I'm, I'm gonna keep my eyes open for that. How dare you restore a real locomotive? I wish. I'm in the midst of restoring a Bowser PRR E6 Atlantic. I've got everything apart. I'm finishing up cleaning everything after stripping off the paint. Anyways, I think it's time to change things up. First engine that I see requested, which I have, we'll run that. Did they ever make a replica of the Russian 12 or 14 drive steam, steam locomotive? 
I'm sure somebody's made a locomotive like that. I doubt that any manufacturer has, though. If you did build a model of it, you'd either have to get very creative with cutting down the flanges, or you would have to have a layout with ridiculously wide, wide curves, because uh, the real counterparts were known for jumping the track. I'm sure the HO skill models would be no different unless you were creative. SMT restores the entire HCW railway and then it washes out again. I don't know if that railway is ever going to exist. It'd be nice if they started up an operation in Wakefield, but uh, nobody's willing to pony up the money. You know, it's funny. In the 90s, they probably spent about a million dollars setting up that entire railway. Nobody seems to be willing to spend $70,000 to uh, move one locomotive to the town. It's, it's a really weird situation. Hey, SMT, do you stream on the same days, or is it just random days when you feel like it? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, there's no select schedule. It's usually uh, after 7 o'clock, so kind of between uh, 7 and 10 o'clock is when I do most of my live streams. But uh, there's no set day. Things are just a little too under, too unpredictable to plan something like that. Hey, SMT, how much would you pay for a Bachman K4 that needs some work? I found one on eBay. I want to know what you would pay for it. Well, again, it depends. If it's a locomotive from the 80s, it's worth like $15. If it's one in good shape, I don't know. It might be worth over $100. i bucks. i am not really sure on the specifics, but the problem is that Bachman locomotives from the 80s and 90s were not built very well, and they usually don't run that great. Modern engines are way better uh, from Bachman, so... That's a huge uh, thing that deciphers how much one of those is worth. Because I see people paying a lot of money for the uh, old Bachman steamers, and I feel bad because uh, you're getting you're getting gypped. How much would it cost to restore the entire HCW train? Um, I'm guessing you'd probably need about $50 million to put that railway back to what it was because the cars have been scrapped, so you need to import more Swedish rolling stock, which would probably cost, I don't know, $250,000 to some and then ship them over here. And then you would have to rebuild the railway, which has been torn up, so you'd need to negotiate with the City of Chelsea, that would probably be another 10 million to get that section of track. Then you need to repair the washout, that's another 5 million at least. And then the locomotive steam engine needs to be recertified, so I don't know how much it costs to uh, do an inspection on one of those, but I can imagine it's not cheap. And I'm sure the diesel probably needs an overhaul, so I'd say if you had 50, 50 million, you could probably get that railway up and going again. Otherwise, I don't see it working. But uh, as for just moving one locomotive, just for display, um, I've, I've heard figures it's about $70,000, which is not unachievable. You know, if you got enough people together, that could definitely be done. Well, you run your BNSF locomotive. Yeah, we can get one of those out. Sounds like the railway doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, Ricky M, welcome to the live stream. Do you have an HO scale Polar Express set? I can't say I do. How much would you say your entire collection is worth? I have no idea. It's kind of hard to say, too, because I buy most of my used, so it's not even like it really has a set price. Plus, I fix it up, so I guess it probably would increase in value, but it's still sort of vague. 
I don't know why these are not coupling. Well, it looks like we got a super chat for $1 from Isaac Scout. Thank you so much for the super chat. Can you please run a Dash 9 locomotive with some random freight cars? Well, we've got the Dash 9. Can we get a tour of all the projects you're hoarding? Yes. go through what we've got here let me see if I can get a light going there we go yeah so this is uh, pretty much all the project locomotives that I have going on at the moment uh, this bottom layer is of stuff which has been tested doesn't run whatsoever the second layout is stuff which maybe the light flickers but it doesn't really run the stuff on this layer um, kind of runs, but not very well. The stuff on this top layer is all kind of miscellaneous. Some of it's missing parts. Uh, we got some pretty cool things up here. This is a locomotive I bought a few months ago, uh, from the 1950s. It's in pretty bad shape, but it did turn over a bit. So with some cleaning, we might be able to get that one going again. Um, but there are some other engines in here, which are going to be a nightmare to work on. We've got this thing. Uh, this is a Bachman from the 80s. If I'm not mistaken, the wheels are in fact out a quarter. It's kind of hard to see, but that bottom driver is pointing down, so that's a bad sign. This one's kind of cursed. This is uh, actually a Canadian National locomotive. Here's one I'd love to fix up soon. Great Northern uh, RS3. We've got all the parts there, so. That one might be uh, in the midst. I also just got uh, this big bin of locomotives from the train club, so. Yeah, plenty of stuff to work on. Hey, SMT, I got a question for you. I have an old River Aussie Alco C420 that I'm wanting to repaint. What should I use to strip the paint from the shell that doesn't destroy the shell? Um, I've just used paint strippers I bought at the hardware store. What you might want to do is find something that's made out of the same plastic and test it out, see if it melts the plastic or not. I find most paint strippers usually do not melt plastic, but I wouldn't count on that. That's why I would test it in advance. Let it sit for like a couple days too, just to be sure, because maybe in the beginning it won't do anything to the plastic, but in the long run it might. Ricky M, ah yes, the Canadian National GS4. Very, very prototypical, no doubt. I'm going to a train show tomorrow in Green Bay, Wisconsin, looking for a nice F unit. Any suggestions on which brand I should look out for? I know not to get Tyco or Lifelike. Uh, the Atherns are pretty good. They're kind of loud, but they, it's rare they break. Uh, the Atlas engines are great. If you can find a Cato one, I, I would buy it. If you can find one for a good price, those things are tanks. You might want to avoid the Bachman. Some of them are good, but the older ones are the same quality as Tyco and Lifelike, if not worse. So that's probably what I would do. River Rossi is still in business, and the modern big boys cost over $1,000. Well, I don't know. It's River Rossi. The brand is still around. I don't really think River Rossi itself is in business because they were all acquired by Hornby, who runs them. SMT, do you know if it's possible to hook a horn hook coupler to a knuckle coupler? You can. It's not good for the knuckle coupler, though. You'll probably end up popping out the springs. 
I've got a paint stripper I'd like to use, but it's been out of production for 20 years. It's called 3M Safest Strip, however, it does not work on enamel paints. Hey, SimT, before I go, do you mind running a the green GG1? Yeah, we could definitely make that happen. Can you make a series of installing crossing gates in front of the trolley? It might be a cool video. I think the light's still on here. I'm just going to disable that. There we go. Anyways, green GG1. Let's see if we can get that out of there. Yeah, SMT, quick question. Have you ever been to Welland, Ontario? I don't think I have. Don't get any older Bachman locomotives from the 80s. Well, they're fine locomotives if you just want something to mess around with, but if you're looking for a quality engine, which isn't going to give you trouble, stay away from them. Building a kit while I watch this. That's a great way to watch live streams. That's usually what I do when I'm watching uh, other people's streams. I just, uh, I don't know, tinker on some locomotives. A lot of locomotives get worked on behind the scenes. Um, I mean, the, the locomotive that I have videos on, I film the process, but there are other engines and they, they you know, they're pretty much runners, so I do those video, those uh, locomotives behind the scenes. So usually while somebody's up to a live stream. Is $50 for a brand new Stuart Hobbies F7 a good price? I'd say so. Uh, if it's in working order, those Stuart locomotives are some of the smoothest I've ever seen. Um, they've got a pretty good reputation in the community. So uh, I, th I think those engines usually retail for about $100. So if you're seeing one in mint condition for $50, I'd say snap it up. SMT, I recently got an AHM GG1 for only $30 and it works perfectly. Do you think it was a good deal? I'd say so. Those uh, GG1s usually go for about $80. Even for a bad one, like... Uh a Pemco GG1 will still cost a fair bit of money. They're not worth it, but... Some locomotives will, will go for a lot just because of what they are, and GG1s are kind of sought after, so... SMT, I have a question. What was your first train, and is it possible to run it? My first locomotive was a lifelike CN diesel. I don't know what kind, but uh, yeah, we could definitely get that one out. I don't know how well it's going to run, but we'll try it. First, we'll see if we can get this GG1 running. Hi, Lise from England. I have a layout 75 by 4 feet long. <laughs> That's an interesting dimension. These river Aussies could really move. What's your favorite brand of locomotive? Probably Athern or uh, Kato, maybe Atlas. Those three are pretty reliable just in terms of budget locomotives. As far as high end stuff go, I, I'd probably pick Rapido, but uh, yeah, just for some good, reliable engines. Athern, Athern, Cato, and Atlas. All great choices. A 
There was something I was going to run. Yes, my first locomotive. Which is this one right here. Have you ever thought about buying scale trains or something from Intermountain? I would. They're both kind of uh, pricey, but I've heard very good things from both those manufacturers in the community. So, uh, yeah, if the opportunity comes up, I might just buy one. Anyways, my very first locomotive. Let's give it some power. Fires right up. What a legend. Rapido has an excellent How It's Made documentary on planning locomotives to sales, respect for the industry. Yeah, that's one thing that can be said for Rapido is I find that they're very open about how they do things. I mean, even a few years ago, uh, I remember they had some sort of a problem where um, they had bought some motors which were not functioning properly, I guess. Anyways, uh, they got complaints from the customers and they made an entire video apologizing to the customers. You know, I feel like a lot of companies would have tried to just cover something like that up and they owned it. They took the engines back and they fixed them. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of good things about Rapido. Um, I've got a very good reputation. I don't know if my uh, lifelike here has just bit the dust, but uh, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem to want to go. not smell great. I hope the motor didn't just uh, burn out. A new project for SMT. Yeah, trying to fix up my childhood train. I hope that's not the end of that engine. Uh, I'm, I'm quite fond of that locomotive. Most people I think are of uh, their very first engine. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, that's nice. It's, you know, it's a life. Like, it's got the most generic parts. I can definitely get it going again. I could put an entire new drive in it, but uh, I'd rather keep the original parts in it. Like, I don't even want to replace the brushes on it because right now that engine, every single part it has is the same one it left the factory with. So, yeah, definitely. Uh, I prefer not to replace any parts. Has Nerf Cat ever destroyed your layout? No, he's done little bits of damage here and there, but most of the time when he jumps up here, he just walks, knocks over trees and things like that. He's never actually broken anything. You should put some DCC sound in it. Yeah, that'd be great. And turn this junky old lifelike locomotive, which somebody probably would not pay a dollar for, into a state-of-the-art engine. I don't know. I think I want to just leave it as is, honestly. I, I kind of like how it's original. Even the damage. I don't want to fix the damage. It's all just memories. Well, I'm not really sure what we should run next. A lot of different options here. My OG locomotive is currently in pieces inside of a bag. It was a Bachman GP35. I got it two years ago. If you can't tell, I hated the thing. Oh. Hey, SMT, do you still have that Tiger Stripe BN locomotive? If you've got that, I'd love to see it. Tiger Stripe Burlington Northern. I don't think I threw any Burlington locomotives. Oh, maybe you're talking about the shark nose. Yeah, I've still got that. Let's see if it starts. Pretty sure this engine had some sort of a problem. But I don't know. Let's give it a chance. Yeah, that was a problem. I don't think the trucks pivot properly.
Yeah, it's gonna need some work. Run the Tyco Durango. All right, let's go find it. Here it is, the Dodge Durango. Let's take this thing for a rip. Oh yeah, I forgot I broke that engine on the last live stream. I kind of wonder if we can just jimmy that gear back in a place. Let's see if that fixed it. All right. Hey. Does the Dodge Durango have the 440 big block? I think this one does. Let's give it the beans. Now, this thing actually runs pretty well. I'm surprised it's pretty quiet for a Tyco. That's about all she wrote. Still remember that you got a BHP iron or locomotive. Could you please run it? I'm very fond of the engine. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll leave it like that for the next live stream. That way I can take it out, put it on the track, realize it's broken, fix it again on the live stream, and we'll run it for three laps just to kill it all over again. It will be great. Now, anyways, as for the BHP iron, I really don't know if this one's going to start. This is... I had quite a few problems. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's try it out here. What brand is the Australian locomotive? I believe it's by, by Broadway Limited. I think it's part of their blue line. Do you have your Chef Boyardee box car? Let me have a look. I'll see if I can find it here. I definitely didn't get rid of it. That sounds like the sound unit fired up. Did you see that Broadway Limited is bringing back DCC ready locomotives? No, I was not aware of that. That's fantastic news. We need uh, we need more support for the DC community. It's starting to become a niche. SMT, if you were to pick, would you get a Hornby model or something else? Probably something else. Not to hate on Hornby. Uh, they just don't have too many locomotives. I'm currently on the lookout for. A 
SMT, how many sound-equipped locomotives do you own? Also, can you run the Indiana RRGP38? Yeah, we could run that locomotive. Um, as for the amount of those engines I own, I'm guessing uh, probably about... Maybe some number between 10 and 20. I heard that brass track causes issues when I use when I use nickel silver it's all right to mix them both the bridges I have are brass also congrats on 80k you're on the road to 100 thank you uh is it okay to mix brass and nickel silver I don't think that there's a problem with it other than you know the fact that brass track can cause problems if you don't clean it often enough it's not going to work as well as nickel silver does obviously but um I have brass track on parts of this layout. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting it in a few places where trains don't usually run just to save some money. Harrison, did you get a chance to watch the link I sent you of the Hiawatha? I have a big boy tender. I will donate if you still need it. The least I can do. Really enjoy all your videos. Yeah, uh, I'm willing to pay the shipping for that big boy tender. In fact, I'm willing to buy it off you, so uh, send me an email about that and uh, we'll figure something out. Um, I haven't seen the video, though. I'll, I'll have to check my email. I haven't done that in a couple days. SMT, in your last live stream, you said sometimes people show up to these live streams just to see how much stuff goes wrong. Is this one going to plan? I'd say so. Yeah, we've had tons of derailments and things like that, but I'm just here to have a good time, and yeah, it's still fun. Uh-oh. All right, well, it seems we've had a bit of a derailment. Um... Should I be able to replace the brass track on my bridges with nickel silver? Probably so. I mean, obviously, I don't know how this bridge is built, but um, there's usually a way to swap out the rails. I mean, if it's one of those ones where it's actually built into the plastic, you're going to have to try to get those rails out and then glue in some nickel silver with crazy glue. That's a little iffy, but I've done it before. Um, sometimes you can slide the rails out. That could work, too. Uh, but with these old wooden bridges where the track's nailed in, you just rip up the rails and you just lay out track over it. Not hard stuff to do. Can you run the Wakefield train? Yeah, I think we could make that happen. Wow, thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Rats Bird. $20, very generous. Howdy from East Fargo, is that your cab forward on the workbench? I know someone might have a part if you need it. Also, the tender is on its way. Oh, terrific. Um, yeah, the, the cab forward is uh, on the table. It's not uh, damaged, though. It's uh, it's in working order. I was just running it earlier in the live stream and, and uh, didn't want to drop it, trying to put it back on the layout. Can you run the big boy? Yeah, we could run the big boy. We'll run the Wakefield train first, though. We haven't run that in a long, in a long time, so let's get those off the main line. Yep. Some tea. Do you have any tips on working on an Athern uh, P42 DC? My Phase 5. P42 I got off eBay is in need of work but is there any tips on how to get the shell off without breaking the ladders um yeah gee let me see if I well I can't use my model as an example because unfortunately uh I've already broken it I think yeah okay let me just quickly show you this uh, just to help somebody in the community here um I think the Phase 5 locomotives are the same as uh, some of the older styles. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's possible on some newer models you have to remove the coupler, but uh, on a lot of these older ones, you've got a clip here, here, 
here and here. So there's one on every corner. So you just need to lift those up. And, uh, there you go. Just take your time with it. When you started with trains, I bet you use plastic wheels. I'm starting on my layout and wondering, does plastic wheels affect the track? They do. Um, plastic wheels very slowly wear down, and when they do, they actually leave um, little particles of plastic on your track. So over time, what that can lead to is you have a uh, track which won't conduct as well because there's basically a layer of plastic over the top. It's not the end of the world. I mean, you can clean them up, but uh, if you can afford them, either get cars with metal wheels or replace your uh, cars that have plastic wheels with metal wheels. Um, you can buy kits from Rapido and other manufacturers because it, it will save you a little bit of work in the long run. SMT, have you ever thought about getting a working piggyback or intermodal unloading crane for your layout? It's an interesting idea. I don't really think I have the room uh, on my layout to, to fit something like that, unless I wanted to cut something else out. Nerf cat here. Uh, he hasn't been down here yet. No. SMT, how did you make the little roads over the crossings? I just took uh, drywall plaster and uh, I put a bit of masking tape down. So you kind of tape off the sides. You put the plaster down. Uh, you try to get it as smooth as possible, and then once you're done, you let it dry. You sand that down. You use a cutting like an exacto blade to cut away any excess. And uh, then you use an X-Acto blade to cut the little flange ways. It seems to work pretty well. Um, the important thing to give the roads a good realistic look is uh, use a matte paint. Because if you use a gloss paint, uh, your roads will be shiny and that just looks a little weird. Anyway, that's something I didn't know for a long time. So it's a good way to, to save money because trying to buy road kits, those are quite expensive. What are your thoughts on Hornby or other British locomotives for that matter? I like them. Uh, that's why I bought a whole bunch of British locomotives. I, I like the old trying locomotives. Um, they're not very realistic, but they're generally easy to work on, except that one I bought the other day. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's kind of interesting to change it up. I mean, I, I prefer North American engines, but I have nothing against the British locomotives. I think that they had some very cool engines like the Deltic. Steam engines are beautiful, too, with all the different colors. i to figure out how to get the headlights working on this thing. It might be button five. Oh, yeah, there we go. Do you ever run anything on the trolley line? I'm looking to install a PCC trolley line in my streets. Uh, the trolley line is not currently wired, but uh, the tracks are usable. I've run some trains uh, up and down the street before. I think the track's a little bit out of gauge, so I'm going to have to do some adjustments on that, but um, that's something I'd like to work on more. Have you ever thought about articulating the... 
super, super chief with a articulated truck. That would probably make it work better. I mean, I'm sure it could handle corners, but I mean, if you add another truck to it, you've, you've basically rebuilt, you know, an AA set. So I, I want to leave it as, as one unit, but I do want to try to modify the truck so that they can handle corners. I don't know if it's actually going to work, but uh, there's going to be some interesting stuff with that in the future. As the crossing light in the background work, it does light up, but it doesn't flash. Um, I need to buy some sort of a, uh, probably a 12 volt relay, like for uh, a car. I might be able to get those lights going. That's what somebody suggested, but uh, I don't know. I'll have to look into that more. It would be nice to get those actually functioning. Have you ever gone rail fanning? Also, what's your best catch? Uh, my best catch, I think it was number 6014, which is uh, one of Canadian Pacific's heritage units. Um, I haven't been rail fanning too many times, but uh, when I get the opportunity, it's uh, it's fun being out there. Sometimes go to the uh, yard in Smith Falls and do some rail fanning. What brand are the crossing lights? Um, WC Hayes. I have a GP50 that smells like ozone. Any way to fix it? You could try cleaning the commutator and the contacts because if those are sparking, that would create a bit of an ozone smell. Um, other than that, that's just something that's a little bit more common with uh, older locomotives. I don't find that seems to happen on modern engines, and I think it's just because the components don't spark as much. But I find, uh, you know, I used to have some engines that would really, they'd have a very strong ozone smell, and I found after I cleaned the commutator, it kind of went away. So it's definitely a good way to, you know, at least minimize it. That's a real crossing signal. The lights are real. The post and uh, X's are uh, reproduction. That was a, a gift from my grandparents. They they built that themselves. Um, very thoughtful. I was I was so touched when uh, when they showed up with that because they just told me um, you know they'd given me an option. It was my birthday, and I said, okay, either you know you can go to the train store or we found you know a guy locally who's selling these two lights. And I thought, oh, the lights, those are cool. So they just told me they were going to get these two lights and I could hang them from the ceiling or something. I thought that would be cool. Anyways, months go by, I don't hear anything from them, and then they just show up with this thing, and uh, I can't tell you the look on my face. I, that, that was pretty surprising. You have cool grandparents? Absolutely, yeah. All you need for your crossing is a mechanical bell. Wouldn't that be cool if we actually... Uh, had the sound. There's something exciting about uh, the sound of a railway crossing bell. It means good stuff's coming. All right, I'll get that off the main line and get some other equipment on here. How did you get started in model railroading? What's your most gratifying accomplishment in railroading? What was your biggest setback and disappointment and what did you learn from it? Okay, there's a lot of questions to unpack there. Um, how did I get started in model railroading? I got started in model railroading uh, because I already had a love for trains, and my dad was uh, into model railroading when he was a kid, and there was this one night back in uh, probably about November of 2006. I was five years old. We were going over to my grandparents' place, and uh, he told me that uh, he had a train collection when he was a kid, and he wanted to show it all to me. So we went digging through... Um, all these old boxes of stuff from when he and his brother were kids and at the very end we finally got to the train set and for probably an hour we just went digging through boxes and looking at all of his old locomotives. Anyways, at the end of the night he tells me I can pick one locomotive and I can take that home. 
So uh, I picked a Lifelike CN locomotive. I'll find the exact engine actually. And uh, we'll run it just for nostalgia's sake here. Yeah, so we went digging through bins. We found all the locomotives, including this one right here. And I uh, brought it back. And then Christmas was right around the door, so I asked for a train set. So that's how I got started in the hobby. Um, let me see if I can find the next question. Gratifying accomplishment in the hobby. The most gratifying accomplishment was getting my grandmother's Hiawatha going again. That was a, a big deal. And biggest setback or disappointment. Uh, gee, what would that be? I don't know. I'd probably also say it was working on the Hiawatha because until I got this thing running, I'd been trying to get it running for probably five years straight with nothing but failure. And it was becoming more and more discouraging every time. And I kind of thought that Things would never work out with that. I guess the other big setback was uh, I was a little bit younger. Uh, I was kind of getting out of the hobby when I was around, uh, I don't know, 14 years old. And uh, that ended up changing, but there, there was a time where not much was changing on the layout. It was kind of falling into disrepair. I didn't know the Spirit of 76 had a real rare seal to look for. Some Spirit of 76 locomotives have a seal. I think it says something about the President of the United States. I'm not entirely sure, but some engines have this very rare seal, and basically they were recalled because they were uh, using copyrighted material. So as a result, they're very rare, and uh, people tend to be willing to pay quite a bit of money for them. Did you know that Tyco and Pemco made a working hopper and loaders that automatically unload coal and through the bottom of the hopper just like the real thing? I'm pretty sure I did see that uh, Tyco set. Uh, I wasn't aware Pemco was making uh, an identical one, but uh, that's interesting. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Lifelike might have had one of those as well, but I'm not certain on that. Just wondering if you'll be on the hunt for 1206 or a lash up to go with 777. Probably so, um, if I can find one for a good price. The same uh, seller who was uh, selling that set, I think had a uh, 1206 locomotive, but I decided not to buy it just because uh, it was going for a lot more than I thought it was worth. I think somebody was paying 150 for it in terms of bidding, which seems pretty high for uh, an old Athern. I have the rare seal, Spirit of 76 in amazing condition. That's great to hear. I think I might own one of them, but it's in really bad shape. I don't know, it's, it's sort of vague. Some people have said I do, some people have said I don't. I don't know which is true. Okay, do you run the Australian B-Class? We already ran that locomotive, so I think I'd prefer to run something else. Although, if no other requests come up, I might just run it, because uh, it doesn't seem like uh, people want anything new at the moment. I found a huge lot of stuff, including a Tyco Alco 1776 with my intermodal cars. That's nice. A shark nose. Yeah, we could definitely run a shark nose or uh, yeah, a shark nose maybe with like a, a mixed freight. Could you run the big boy? We can run the big boy, yeah, sure. Well, I'll run the shark nose first though, because I agreed to that one. Uh, can't see the CN one, so we'll run the uh, Delaware Hudson. Does the Hiawatha run? The Hiawatha does run. Um, I just prefer to maintain it. Uh, oil it all up before I take it out for a spin just because uh, parts for that cost a mint and it's a very sentimental locomotive so uh, it's very rare that I run that locomotive. Uh, the only times I take the Hiawatha out are uh, 
usually for uh, milestones. You should see the video that Sam's Trains made for April 1st. Yeah, I'll have to go check that out. He's usually good for uh, coming up with something creative. Do you have Roblox? Uh, no, I don't have a Roblox account. SMT, I saw a Burlington N scale diesel in the stream. I want to see if it's 989, which I own, but I've only got the shell no cabin windows. I found it at a thrift shop. Wow. What do you think of model power locomotives? It depends because uh, some locomotives that were made by uh, model power were. Uh, actually made by Roco. Um, this actually is a example of that. And these are very good locomotives. They're all wheel drive. Uh, they got a die cast frame, well built. They're not gonna fail you. Other model power locomotives were actually manufactured by Kadar or they were Kadar knockoffs. And uh, those are not very good. They're basically just Bachman locomotives, which you know, uh, Bachman engines were not very good in the time model power was around. So those are okay, but uh, it's, it's the Roco made ones that you want. Those those things will last forever. Let's see if I can find my uh, car here. I think it's this one. Hey Harrison, could you run an Indiana Road locomotive? I live here in Terre Haute, Alabama, or Indiana, I should say. So you can see from my profile picture. Can you do a body shell repair video on one of your broken diesel locomotives? Uh, yeah. I, I did, well, I was going to do one for my uh, GG1 locomotives from Tyco, which got smashed up during the shipping process. I'm pretty sure that box actually got run over or something, but uh, anyways, we'll see what we can do with those. Yeah, what a beauty. SMT, what kind of heritage unit should I get? I have no idea. I get my chair all set up here, try to read some more of these comments. What's the best starter set to get? I mean, it's a it's a matter of preference, right? When some people might want to be an SF one, some people might want a Santa Fe one. If I were buying a starter set today to get into the hobby, I'd probably just buy the cheapest one Bachman has. Stay away from those larger sets. Um, but, uh, yeah, the choice is really up to you. If you have a little more money, I'd probably spring for one of the Walters starter sets. Of course, you can, you know, go and buy, uh, all these, uh, all, everything you need a la carte, but unfortunately, that's going to, uh, probably end up costing a little bit more. 
Unless you know how to put together some good deals. My model power is all-wheel drive. Is that good? Yeah, it's probably one of the uh, Roco ones, so it's, I doubt it's going to give you any issues. Mainly Central. Hey, folks, if you're watching, please slam the like button. Uh, do whatever you want to the like button. I don't really care. <laughs> Thank you, though. Do you have any tips for starting a layout? I would figure out how much space you have and what your budget is and then go from there. Uh, put together some sort of a list of everything you want and deduct things off the list based on, again, your space and your budget. But uh, if you plan a layout well enough, you can... Uh, yeah, I find even if you don't have a lot of space, you can still make something impressive. What's your opinion on President's Choice sets? They were made by Bahano. Uh, very good train sets. Uh, they were being sold super cheap. Um, Loblaws was selling those at the time for uh, $100, which for a Mahano steam engine plus track and a few cars, it's a pretty good deal. But the real savings was the day after Christmas, they wanted to get rid of the train sets because they were being you know, sold as a, a Christmas promotion. So they'd sell them for 50% off. So you could buy yourself a brand new Mahano steam engine, like a 2102 for 50 bucks. So you'd have uh, people who own stores or people who were in the hobby and they would go to Loblaws, they would just buy out whatever was left and then they would list all the locomotives on eBay without the train set for uh, usually about $160. So yeah, they were fantastic train sets. Very high quality locomotive for a starter set. I have a couple of uh, old Mahano engines, n never given me any trouble. I already have a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Well, that's perfect. That's uh, probably the best way to start. If you can uh, afford to put some styrofoam on top, I'd probably go with that. But uh, yeah, sometimes you gotta work with what we have. A couple of President's Choice sets had diesels instead of steam locomotives. I think they made one or two like that, but uh, the diesels were still pretty good. Somebody a few months ago sent one in. I, I don't know where it is right now, but uh, all-wheel drive locomotive. I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure it had a die-cast body, so it was certainly up to similar quality as the uh, steam engines were. Just on the lookout, I need to find the uh, tender for my big boy locomotive. I'll see if I can get that. All right, I found it. Have you ever been to Yard Hobbies in Roanoke, VA? I can't say I have, no. Please pull the Go Coaches with the big boy. Unfortunately, I can't because it's got this uh, foreign style coupler. I'll have to get that replaced. Another tender. I can try to look for that because it actually does have a knuckle coupler which we might be able to use. But I don't know. I think that coupler is also out of gauge. So 
I'll just let the engine go on its own, maybe. I just got my hands on a working 1951 River Rossi Hiawatha. Well, congratulations. I hope you were able to buy it for a uh, good price. Those things are quite sought after locomotives. It's very rare that uh, you can find one cheap. Um, I heard a story on the Tyco forums about somebody buying one in non-working order for $5. I mean, that's, that's just a ridiculously low price. Somebody clearly did not know what they were selling. But uh, generally, I find when you see those engines on eBay, people want at least $600 for them. I remember a couple of years ago, somebody put one up for auction and uh, people were trying to pay through the nose for that thing. And uh, I think the winning auction was six or $700, which in comparison for the buy it now price, that's actually a pretty good deal. But uh, yeah, they're worth a mint. Have you ever heard of the Ann Arbor Rail Railroad? I have heard of the uh, Ann Arbor Railroad. My uh, dad was born in Ann Arbor, so uh, I'm familiar with the town. Anyways, let's try to get this thing all uh, set up here. About a million different wheels to go. Here's a problem I've noticed. I don't know if this is just on my River Aussie Big Boy or if it's with all of them, but this uh, pipe here, uh, gets caught on the side of the shell and then it causes the engine to sit slanted. So what you have to do is you have to kind of negotiate it in like that. What are your thoughts on the Bachman Daylight Special set? If you're just talking about the regular Bachman Daylights, they're, uh, they're okay. Um... I have owned a couple. I've had problems with them, but yeah, it's kind of kind of a mixed thing. I don't know. Bachman is uh, it's an interesting manufacturer. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yep. Hey, SMT, have you thought about visiting Kansas City at some point? There's some good spots to film some trains. Also, buy trains as well. I don't have a plan to go there, but uh, there are plenty of places in the United States I'd love to visit. I haven't... I, I don't know. I've been to quite a few places in the States, but, you know, it's just such a big country. There's so many different places to go. So even though I've been to a lot of places, there's still way more in the ways of things to see there. That's for sure. Anyway, we'll see how long this thing stays on the track. Bachman's quality has been all over the place for the past few decades. I would say it's been on the up and up. It's definitely gotten better, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't call them a, a flawless manufacturer. I mean, during the 80s, some of the stuff they were rolling out with was um, not so good. And in the 90s, you know, they started to improve things. Uh, through the 2000s, they got better, but... Uh, there was still a lot of lemons rolling out of the factory at that time. I have a friend, he has a Bachman steam engine, and uh, I think he's had to send it back to them because it's had so many quartering issues, it's actually been bending its own rods. So he sent it back to them three times, it still doesn't run right, so they were not all well built. I got some good antique stores with model trains here in Kansas City. I got a brass Anderson Topeka Santa Fe F unit for $35. Can't find the manufacturer though. Hmm. Might be a Ten Shoto. Uh, but uh, yeah, $35 for a brass engine. That's a heck of a deal. Have you ever been to BC Shavers Hobbies? Fortunately not.
The Bayside Canadian Railway short line in existence, uh, a 220 foot long used loophole by the Jones Act. Basically, a truck, whoops, truck gets loaded onto a train, goes from one end of the line to the other end of the parking lot. I've seen that. Um, I guess when you're importing seafood into Canada, there's some sort of tariff that can be avoided if it rides on uh, rail for a certain amount of time. So what this company did was they built, as uh, you know, uh, Kyle here says, 220 feet of track. So the, the ships get unloaded, the trucks get on land, they drive the trucks on a, a flat car with uh, a tiny locomotive and they just drive it back and forth then the trucks go off the train. They just go on the uh, train for a few minutes just to avoid the tariff. Um, very weird situation, and uh, they're probably going to crack down on it because it's not... I think that the train is supposed to go a certain distance, which that rule uh, violates, but uh, it's, a, it's a really kind of interesting story. I think somebody made a video about that called, like, the world's most useless railway. Uh, pretty entertaining video. Everyone should uh, go check it out. Can you still send a 40-year-old Bachman for warranty work? I'm pretty sure you can, but you have to have proof of purchase. I think that that's their policy now. Um, so unless you have the receipt in the box, I, I doubt they'll work on it. Uh, Bachman used to be really cool about uh, their, their warranty. You could pretty much send anything to them. Like me and my dad, we bought a Bachman steam locomotive at a train show, and they sent us back a, uh, another one for free basically but that was years ago and apparently since then they've kind of cracked down on that because uh obviously i think a lot of people were exploiting that they'd probably go to train shows buy every old bachman engine send them back and then get brand new engines which they could sell so i think it was probably a little too expensive for uh for them to continue Do you have any layout ideas for a new HO scale layout? I bought a used Conrail train and I'm looking to buy track for a layout. I don't have any layout ideas specifically. I think the main one I would probably go with is putting two separate circuits because then you can run two trains at the same time without them interfering with each other. Um, that's something that I did on my second layout here and uh, I haven't regretted it. It's just I don't know, it's fun to be able to run two different things at the same time without having to worry about it, but uh, that's really only my main suggestion. Uh, and LWC... Production says, or LWCS, sorry, uh, we are still cool, but it's a one-year warranty after the year. It's a service fee. Trust me, I work for them. I was under the impression, because other people have tried to send stuff in a Bachman, that um, not only do you have to pay the service fee, but you also have to have proof that you purchased the locomotive. So uh, if you, let's say, bought a Bachman locomotive from a garage sale, even if you had the original box and everything, the warranty was voided because you were not the end, the person who purchased the locomotive. Correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, that would be good if they were still honoring that warranty, but uh, I've, I've heard stuff to the contrary from people who, uh, who have sent stuff in. SMT, do you have a video on your N-Scale collection? I did one a few years ago. I should probably do an update because there's uh, quite a few new locomotives, and uh, I bought more in skill stuff at the train show, so there's definitely going to be some additions to that, but uh, yeah, it'll be good to, to make a new one. What's your next big project now that you've completed the Yellowstone? Try to finish off the Hershey factory, get the layout further underway, and then... Once that's out of the way, it's probably going to be working on uh, the end scale layout, and... Uh, building the Forest Fair Village Mall. All right, so uh, LWCS Production says, technically that is true, but we still normally honor it. Okay, that's good to hear.
SMT, this fellow on YouTube said back when Tycho was in business, they would send him power torques whenever one bit the dust. Some companies uh, have policies like that. Um, I know that Rapido is very good for uh, replacement parts. I had a locomotive which was missing some parts. Uh, they, had, they had broken off in the box. It was uh, like the mirrors. So I contacted uh, the store which I'd bought it from. They put me in contact to a uh, technician at Rapido and they sent me four new mirrors for free. And uh, I didn't even have to give them my address. They communicated with the uh, supplier and sorted that out. So uh, some manufacturers are very good for that. I, I'm pretty sure Walters, uh, I've heard stories of people getting free horn hook couplers from them too. So yeah, some, some manufacturers are good. Apparently though, Rapido has actually, uh, this is according to somebody at a train show, they've had to be careful because some people have been using that to get free parts. So that's kind of naughty selling off extra motors and things like that. Tyco claimed to only have a 90-day warranty, but they said they would send him new parts even after five years. Wow. Hey, SMT, I'm a little late joining the live stream, but have you ever messed around with O scale or G scale? Uh, never with G scale before, but I do actually have a, a small O scale setup. Just this kind of circuit of track and a few locomotives. Uh, I like O scale, it's kind of novel. I, I, I need to fix that whole thing up though, it's broken again. Walters has really good customer service. They fixed two faulty DCC sound locomotives for me. That's good to hear. The guy that got a Tyco locomotive in 1978 and it died in 1984, it was discontinued. So Tyco sent him a different locomotive for free. Well, I've got to say, I'm impressed. I, I guess Tyco had better customer service than I had thought. It's kind of funny because, uh, you know, I wouldn't consider Tyco to be the best in terms of making quality products, but I guess as far as customer service goes, they actually did care about the consumer. I wish that Tyco was still around. I mean, I don't think that they would be around in the same capacity that they were because uh, their products were not very good, but... I feel like they could have evolved kind of like Bachman did and, and started to roll out slightly better drives. And, uh, you know, it would have been good to still have a uh, kind of consumer-grade company. That was what Lifelike was. They were making uh, pretty good little train sets for beginners. They weren't super high quality, but they were uh, quite cheap. I think most of Lifelike's, uh, you know, Ford... You had like a locomotive, a caboose, track... And a couple cars, I think those were mostly like $50, which is a pretty reasonable price for a train set. The, the best you could do today would probably cost like $130. So even with inflation, the price of these sets has, has gone up past them. I love the big boy. This was one of the best deals. I, I think I paid something crazy, like $27 for this locomotive in an eBay lot. And it was a catch. I did, didn't come with a tender, but still, uh, you know, for a modern River Rossi, that's not that bad. Plus, it had a decoder, so I was pretty happy with that deal. Do have any Southern Railway locomotives? Not real. Well, no, I've got one at least. I'll see if I can go find it. So I'm gonna have to plug in my phone in a second here. The battery's starting to run kind of low. Let's see, I'm pretty sure it's with these engines right here. There it is. Just gonna bring a uh, charger over here, that way I can plug in the phone.
Yeah, so the story with this locomotive is I was uh, vacationing in Florida, and I was at this train store. I think it was called Dana's Railroad Supply. Uh, super nice people running that place. Anyways, I found this locomotive, and I thought it had a pretty nice paint scheme, so I decided to buy it. Yeah, four and eight old AHM. It seems to run pretty well. Don't ask about Broadway limited customer service. My uncle got a T1 soon after it ran over a faulty part of our module and melted the pilot truck. He called Broadway limited and they said, ha ha loser. Okay, I don't think that they said that literally, but uh, if, if they uh, mistreated you for, uh, you know, breaking something that's kind of kind of crummy. Broadway Limited is one of those companies that I hear mixed things about it. A lot of people like them for the detail, um, but I have heard some interesting stories about their quality. My model railway club owns a ton of those locomotives, but one of them fell off the layout and the motor got destroyed. Well, that's unfortunate. What are some of your new locomotives? Um, I don't know. I could give everybody a brief look at what I got at the train show. It'll be some uh, kind of a sneak preview of, of what I bought. I'm not going to go through all of it because uh, I don't want to spoil everything here. But um, yeah, the Obier flea market was going on. So I was able to buy this layout right here. Entire layout, track and all for ten dollars so i felt like that was a pretty good deal now it's going to need some restoration so you know it's not perfect it also has this really weird ho scale crossing i don't know why that's on there but uh, that's going to be a fun project a lot of the n scale people have wanted me to do something i think this is going to be way better than the existing layout um i was able to buy this entire organizer which actually is full of parts you can see there's actually parts of a uh, brass locomotive in here. So that was a pretty sweet deal. Uh, they wanted 25. I paid 20 for it. So to me, for one of these boxes, plus all those parts, which could come in handy, sweet deal. So I was very happy with that. Uh, I was actually able to buy some uh, Z scale stuff. So got uh, bridge, this thing, uh, a whole bunch of any. Anyways, this box right here was $10. Um, so I feel like that's a pretty good deal, especially with this included. This is apparently a limited run, so that's kind of cool. Via P42 with sound, I was able to buy that for $150, which in my opinion is a good deal because these things go for about $300. Somebody's put it in a Rapido box, but still, I'm happy with that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other stuff which I'm not going to get into, but uh, I still felt like that was pretty good. And then for the N-Scale layout, I bought... A whole bunch of buildings and stuff. Uh, it says two dollars for the box. Now I threw a bunch of stuff in here, so uh, like these engines cost a little bit more, but still, uh, I don't think I paid twenty dollars for. It was probably like ten bucks for everything in this box. Like everything was going real cheap. You know what I mean? And uh, and I also got this train set for uh, thirty bucks, I think. So, yeah, some cool deals. When, once I do the video, I'll definitely do a more uh, in-depth review, and we'll actually go through and test all this stuff out, because, uh, you know, sometimes you get stuff like this where they say it doesn't run, and it does. And then you get things like this where they say it's in mint condition, and it turns out to be junk. We'll find out, but uh, either way, quite the haul. I'm very uh, good. Harrison's getting organized. Yeah, well, I'll have to figure out where all this stuff goes, but... Um, yeah, I bought all this stuff kind of piecemeal, so basically, uh, while I was at the show, I kind of tried to organize everything, so. At least all the stuff is somewhat categorized. Plus, that organizer is going to be terrific. I can put all my other parts in there and uh, finally know where the motors and everything else are, so. Sorry, just muted the thing by accident, trying to shut off the light. It's always so much fun when the train show comes around. The deals you can find. Can we see that N scale Burlington diesel? Was there one in there? Let's quickly have a look. There we go, the light's on. Um... I 
I don't see any in scale Burlington Diesel. One you had. I don't know which one that is. I have a box just for Tyco stuff. That's a good way to organize it. In the previous live stream, we tried to run some uh, different pieces of equipment. Maybe we'll try to get some of those out. Silly question, SMT, but how do you get so good at racking your locomotives and putting them on a track? How, how do you get so good at racking your locomotives and putting them on the track with so much ease? Is it just patience or precise? I don't find I am that good at putting the locomotives on the track. Uh, you know, I usually sometimes forget a wheel or something like that, but um, I don't know. When you, you put enough engines on the track, you kind of get a feel for where the center is, and if you drop it in place, they, the flanges will usually guide the wheels into place. So I, I guess that's why. Uh, yeah, I want to get my tripod. That way we could see if some of those N-scale engines work. I should do a video or a live stream one day running all my N-Scale engines and I could actually find out what out of this collection works. He's actually pretty good at putting trains on the track with one hand. Maybe that's the deciphering factor. Can you do it with one hand? You and my grandfather had a guy scam us out of $300 for an N-Scale Caddo UPFEF. It has a ton of, ton of trouble running. It jumps off the track on right turnouts. That's unfortunate. It's a sad thing, uh, you know, a lot of people on Facebook Marketplace and stuff, uh, they, they find out that they have anything like a car or a boat or something like that that has a problem, and then they just want to make that problem somebody else's problem by uh, tricking them into buying it. So they'll say, oh, it's in perfect condition. Oh, you, you know, throw some oil in this thing, it's going to be great. Uh, I, I had that happen at a train show. It's one of the few times where I have been scammed at a train show where there's this guy selling this old steam locomotive, and he said, oh, it's a little bit rough, uh, you know, it doesn't run the best, but with a little bit of oil, I'm sure you'll be in business. And uh, I brought it home, and it was seized so badly that the motor wouldn't even turn. I had to get the motor out, and then just trying to get it to move even a little bit was uh, a nightmare. I did get that engine going, but the seller was very dishonest about its condition. Because I don't mind if somebody's selling something that's bad, just as long as they're honest about it. What was your most satisfying deal? The cheapest engine with the easiest repair or hidden gold in a giveaway box? Um, there was that, well, it's the big boy that I'm running right now. I mean, I, again, I think I paid like $27 for that. That was a pretty good deal, especially since it came with DCC. Um, I don't... I don't know what else. I've, I've definitely had some, some pretty good scores over the years, but uh, it's always a mixed bag. You never really know what you're going to get. Anyways, let's see if we can get some of these N-Scale engines to start. I don't really know what to begin with. Uh... Yeah, whatever this is, let's see if that will run. A local hobby store of mine sold me an Amtrak, five Amtrak cars in good condition for $50. Well, that doesn't seem too bad, 50 or uh, $10 a car. What's your favorite gauge? Standard gauge? All right. Well, she start? Oh, well, that's surprising. Can 
you please run a British locomotive also? Would you rather have one of your most wanted locomotives or five modern locomotives? Uh, one of my most wanted locomotives. I don't have anything against uh, modern locomotives or buying modern locomotives, but one thing that modern engines like, uh, I don't know, let's say a brand new Cato engine does not have is character. Because uh, when you buy used locomotives, it, it has some kind of a story with it. A brand new engine is, it's a, it's a blank slate. So there's something that I find kind of exciting about, you know, buying weird old locomotives and seeing if they'll start opening them up, seeing what other people have done for maintenance, finding out they're in horrible condition. This one does not seem to be doing so well. Okay, we got a junker. David Z to G scale, welcome to the live stream. SMT, if you ever are in Chicago, you should go to the Illinois Railway Museum. We got an Atlas engine. Yeah, that one's kind of a junker too. Uh, Yama Blue Hobbies by SMT. Thank. Uh, see you next week. Thank you for a good rest of your day. Oh, thanks. Do you like Canadian Pacific or Canadian National more? Uh, probably Canadian National just for the paint scheme. Uh, Canadian Pacific is, is a great railroad. Um, and they do a lot of good stuff too. Like I, I like how they have the holiday train every year, which uh, raises money for charity. Um, I'm not running the same engine I just was, by the way. These are actually uh, just two identical models. So we'll see if this one will start. What's your favorite HO scale brand? Uh, for used locomotives, it's it's Atherin. Atherin or Kato. Atlas is are, are pretty good too. I forget if this runs. Mm, it runs not very well. This is one, I can't remember if this was the free locomotive. I, I got one of these engines for free from my hobby shop and it was supposed to be in completely junk shape. So I don't know what the story with that is, but that's another one. I'll have to do a video on repairing. Have you ever heard of scale trains? I've heard a lot of good things about them, yeah. Little uh, Bachman chassis system. Pretty sure this is quite a dandy little runner. Not really. Yeah, look at that. Came right back to life. Do you have a class 55 Deltic? Those engines are insane. Three cranks, 28 pistons, two stroke opposed pistons, no cylinder heads. They sound amazing. I'm a diesel tech. I love all diesels. Yeah, diesels rock, um, especially two strokes. I'm a big fan of two strokes, gas or diesel. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have any uh, 55 Deltics, but I would like to get one. I don't have a crazy amount of British locomotives, but uh, yeah, I love the Deltics. What a, what a cool design.
I'm unsubscribing. I asked you numerous times to run something and you don't even acknowledge that I exist. You are a liar, YouTube purposely... A liar YouTuber purposely not responding to people. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry to hear that. I think you're misunderstanding a little bit. I, I don't intentionally ignore him, anybody's comments. Uh, sometimes they get missed or they're organized by the uh, algorithm. But um, no, I'm, I'm not going to ignore somebody unless they're saying anything inappropriate. Just viewed your repair video on the steam engine where you replaced the entire motor. That was a nightmare. Um, I really did not expect to run into so much trouble. I mean, I'm happy I was able to get that engine running again, but unfortunately, uh, yeah, that was a, a little bit of a problematic one. I think that Train Man 1 is a little bit mad. Yeah, it kind of seems that way. I don't know. A lot of people seem to think that I, I, I go through and I single out people and I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? Today I think I'm going to pick on this guy, so I'm going to ignore all of his comments until he gets really angry and see what happens. But it's, it's just not the case. Um, you know, I, I feel bad that people feel that way, but um, I don't roll like that. The only time I'll ever ignore a comment is if somebody's saying something like really, you know, unsavory. I'm not going to read that out to everybody, but otherwise there's no person I would ever single out. Running with request, could you run the 777 with some passenger cars? I guess we can try to run that one more time. I'm probably going to finish off the stream soon just because it's starting to... It's sort of late, and I think people upstairs probably want to head off to bed, but uh, yeah, we could run a couple more. That sounded like an April Fool's joke to me. I don't know. that Maybe that was a sarcastic comment. Who knows? SMT, do you know how to flip a headlight mount from vertical to horizontal? I'm trying to do that on my Alco C420. I'm not sure on that particular engine. If you want to send me an email about it, I'll uh, I'll try to help you. But if I don't know the brand or anything about the locomotive, it's kind of hard to give advice on that sort of thing. Yeah, that sounded like an April Fool's joke to me. What's your next video going to be? It's either going to be the OVA or flea market where I do a tour of the show and then actually dig into those boxes and show everybody what I got. Or uh, an unboxing, or possibly a video on buying shady model trains off Facebook Marketplace, because uh, I um, I found a lot on Facebook Marketplace. I bought it, and the box actually showed up. I kind of wondered if I was going to be scammed, but I wasn't, so that might be the comment. Anyways, let's see if we can get the passenger train cars going with the uh, 777 locomotives. I think I'll just probably put 777 itself out because that dummy engine seems to be leading to a lot of the derailments. SMT, you forgot to show the end scale layout I want to see before the stream is over. I, I still don't know which one that is because I ran that Burlington Northern engine, so... I don't know. I don't know which one you're, you're talking about. They should make Unstoppable 2. I don't know what they would make Unstoppable 2 about. Um, I mean, I guess they could do a story about another runaway train in a different town and make something new, but I, I feel like it would be hard to come up with a plot which was different from the original Unstoppable. I mean, I don't know. If they manage to make a good Unstoppable 2, I'll be impressed. All right, let's see if this works. It's the Burlington locomotive, not Burlington Northern. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll have a look for that. But first, let's see if we can get this thing moving. Okay, so the coupler height, not very good. Um, I don't think this is gonna work. 
the train in Unstoppable 2 could have radioactive waste instead of chemicals. That kind of sounds like the story of Atomic Train from the 90s. I'm not sure if you're referencing it, but uh, yeah, that, that, would, that would definitely make the movie a lot more stressful. Do you remember how much you paid for your N-Skill engines? They have to be pretty expensive. For all of them, um, I, I don't know. Uh, the ones in this box were... You know, between five and two dollars, it really was not all that expensive. I guess this must be the Burlington locomotive. I thought you'd do an April Fool's video. Well, uh, in the beginning of the live stream, there actually was a, a little April Fool thing, but. Uh, yeah, I couldn't come up with any ideas. Come on, little Burlington. That's not doing very well. Okay. Got some good deals on those end scale engines. Yeah, the guy selling them was basically giving them away. I mean, he was telling me that they were junked and they weren't going to run very well, if at all. But uh, I'm okay with that. I'd I'd rather pay less on something that I can try to fix up than pay full price for something in working condition. I mean, where's the fun in that? Derailed again. Imagine manufacturers making a CSX Crazy 8's locomotive. I feel like some manufacturer is going to end up doing that one day. Ooh, thank you for the super chat, Old Bay Rail fan. Hi, SMT. Can you run a local with a long hood forward? Long hood forward. What is a long hood locomotive? Uh, is an RS3 a long hood? I'm not very knowledgeable on this stuff. Uh, You need another real-life runaway train that ended on a good note. Unfortunately, mostly in horrific Lac-Megantic, Al, Al Cajon Pass in San, Bern in San, Bern S San Bernardino had three. It would be hard. You should buy 1206 and Remake Unstoppable. I, mean, I don't think I could make the entire movie, but it would be fun to make some parodies of those scenes. Long hood forward means backwards. Oh, okay, I understand now. That makes a lot more sense. That would be a good choice. What about this? This is going to be nice. I don't know if this was ever reprogrammed to its uh, road number. Apparently not. <laughs> I 
I'm gonna go just run that off for the sake of people upstairs. SMT, what do you think about the net? Okay, I can't pronounce that word. Something railway. Have you seen some of the locomotives that look like the incident? I, I'm not aware of that that particular railway or any accidents related to it. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't know anything about that. Did you see the runaway UP iron train that derailed? somewhere between 200 and 140 miles an hour just the other day no i have not that's insane can't wait to see the hershey factory finished yeah you and me both it's getting close please run the royal hudson yeah we can do that Shorting everything out. Jake here, is this where all the TikTok girls hang out? I sure hope not. Thank you, Mr. SMT. I will give you 1,200 Lackawanna points of respect. All right. Okay, I've got a three-point plan to make this work. I'm going to let the uh, passenger train go by, and then I'm going to try to hopefully get the steam engine running alongside it, but we'll... We'll run the passenger train really slow. Jakira, I would hope for some TikTok girls. Yeah, I know, but the, the, not, not the TikTok variety. That's okay. I don't want them. Guys, stop getting angry at SMT for not reading comments. It's difficult to run model trains and uh, read comments at the same time that are constantly moving. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I, I really do try to read all the comments. I, I promise you that. But it is, uh, as um, as Ov Ovilo just pointed out, it's really tricky to, uh, you know, not miss any single comments and set the trains up at the same time. There's a lot happening at the same time, and the comments move pretty quick, even with the slow mode enabled. All right, let's see if we can get this thing going. It's not starting. Oh, well, that's a bummer. I guess we'll just try to get it going on DC here. I don't know how well this is all gonna work, but. This is weird. I'm putting quite a bit of power in the track right now. The Indiana locomotive's hardly moving. Let's not make it blank, blank, uh, blankment judgments. People can surprise you, but in general, SMT is not wrong. 
Yeah, I don't know. The type type of content most people on TikTok are making, I'm not talking about the community, but just in general, uh, I would not have high hopes. There's this uh, guy online, uh, Joey B. Tunes. He makes videos uh, yeah, kind of doing reviews of some of these TikTok stuff, uh, these TikTok videos. It's a little alarming, some of the content people put together. It's, uh, it's not good. Amps are short timing in a full load. Oh, okay. Is it because there's another engine on the track? So I'm not used to this fancy DCC stuff. And now it's not even moving. It's... Nope. I guess the you this the Royal Hudson was not the problem. Anyways, I'll, uh, I'll put a British locomotive on. I said I was going to run one of those, so I'll uh, follow through with that. I think shortly after I'll probably finish off the live stream because uh, I've been going for an hour and 42 minutes, so uh, we'll finish things off pretty soon. Another super chat. Oh, let's catch that. I see it. It's about to disappear. Uh, Alexander Thomas, hi from Missouri. Just watched Delay in the Block Productions High Hood Norfolk Southern video. Got any uh, High Hood NS diesels? Much love. Thank you so much for the super chat. I don't think I do have any uh, High Hood Norfolk Southern diesel locomotives. I've, I've got a couple High Hoods, but not, not from Norfolk Southern. But uh, yeah, thank you for the uh, super chat. Thanks for uh, pointing that out, David. I'm glad I didn't miss that one. Uh, can you run the Delaware Lackawanna DCC Santa locomotive? Yep, we can make that happen. The British Atlantic. I don't even know if I want to run that thing, but uh, let's try it out. We'll run that at the uh, final time. Final stream, I guess. I already forgot what I was supposed to run. I was supposed to run the Atlantic. I didn't forget. The Lackawanna locomotive, that was it. I have a short-term memory problem, so stuff will sometimes disappear for a little while. I do apologize for that, but uh, there's not that much I could do about it. Now, where the heck is that Erie Lackawanna locomotive? It might be somewhere here. As a matter of fact. Yeah, so we'll get this thing rolling, and then uh, I'll look for some British locomotive, which is not the Inner City 125. Well, it's the Atlantic. That's what was requested. But uh, as you would have seen in the video, the Atlantic locomotive doesn't really run on this layout because the flanges are too big. So it might work, but it's not going to work that well. Short timing is what happens when you're running 8 on a grade and the train is moving too slow, not enough power. It's a DC, not an AC power thing. Okay, interesting. Have you heard of the 1960s Lionel HO fire, uh, fire power set? No, I don't think I have. Actually, I'll just run this train uh, off onto that line. It sounds like the engine's broken. I can hear the wheels moving, but... I don't know, maybe it's too much weight. Let's see if that fixed it. There we go. Bubbles, a locomotive needs fuel to run right, so if you don't put fuel in it, somebody else did. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, the Trailer Park Boys, what a great show. Ugh. 
They went right on through. That wasn't supposed to happen. Someone's asking for my P.O. box. I have a video online. It's called SMT Mainline. I got a P.O. box. And uh, in the description of that video, the P.O. box is listed there. I used to have a card down here with the P.O. box, but um, I lost it. So, yeah, I, I, I don't have it on memory is what I'm saying. Yeah, let's see if it goes. No, nope, it's trying to go straight through again. That's really weird. Opinions on the Canadian Pacific Kansas City Southern merger. I'm uh, kind of surprised the deal went through. I'm really curious to see if it does um, what they're going to do with the paint scheme. That's kind of my uh, biggest concern. But uh, I think it should be good. Did you hear about the train crash in Ohio about a month ago? The Palestine crash? Yeah. Okay, um, yeah, so now we're going to try to get that Erie Lackawanna going. We'll see if we can get the Atlantic running for the final stream. Big sound. Yeah, the sound's terrific on this engine. Well, the horn's a little quieter than the uh, sound effects, but uh, it's still pretty impressive. I'm surprised that Ferramex didn't merge with KCS. Yeah, me too. It, it, geographically, I guess, would have made more sense, but I guess from Canadian Pacifics and uh, CN at one point, their standpoint was probably that uh, you know, they can expand into the south more. So we'll link that off. Let's see if we can get that Atlantic running. Oh, David's gone and he's pulled up the uh, P.O. box. So for anybody who wants it, it's SMT Mainline. BP 15 Rue Montclair, P.O. Box number 346, Gatineau, Quebec, J8Y, 2E0. So there you have it. All right, let's see if we can get this bucket of bolts to make at least one lap around the layout. I have very low expectations because, frankly, it uh, wasn't even perfectly stable on that circle of track. And the flanges are way too big, so I think that this is going to have a lot of issues, but let's give it a go here. I also didn't glue on the wheel that I lost in the previous video, so that's, not, that's almost undoubtedly going to come off as well. This is about what I expected.
There was a super chat. Uh, I don't see anything in the queue. Shoot. Oh, wait, here it is. Uh, my Thick Mew. Hello from Mississippi. I've been subbed since you acquired 20,000 subscribers and you got me back into the hobby. Keep making videos. Well, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Are you still running the live stream? Yeah, this is still live. Um, probably about to wrap things up because uh, we just reached 10 o'clock and I just don't want to keep everybody upstairs awake all night. But, uh, yeah. Okay, David ZG Skills also put my email uh, in the comments as well. So if anybody wants to contact me uh, surrounding maintenance and uh, other questions about building layouts and so on, I'll uh, try my best to get back to you and give you some sort of uh, an idea of whatever it is you're looking for. Taco Bell wants you to run the big boy. We already ran the big boy, so I'll run more, one more locomotive. Um, but that's that's definitely going to be it. You ever get your hands on six eleven? I can't say I have. I can't imagine how poorly that would run on code eighty three track. I don't think it would run on code eighty three track. I think the flanges are so big it would sit above the rails and it wouldn't even move. Do you have AWVR 1206? Uh, I cannot say that I do. I'm on the look for one, though. Run an E8. All right. That will be it. One Amtrak E8. Order up. Hopefully this thing starts. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream. Just about to wrap things up, but uh, we're going to run this one last locomotive. Okay, uh, this is kind of weird. We're getting power, but engine's not going, so I'll have to pick something else. I've got more than one E8, though, so we'll just go and find another one, I guess. Doing well. Oh, not too bad, not too bad. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, here we go. What's the diesel with the Swedish passenger calls? Also, could I send you fan mail? Absolutely. Um, the diesel with the Swedish cars is a, uh, a T43, which is a, the body, I believe, is Swedish, but the motor is all uh, built by uh, General Motors. So it's actually, uh, it's got a lot of American parts in it. This, by the way, is the uh, locomotive which had the uh, spider egg in it. If anybody remembers that video. I only had one British locomotive run and it was a locomotive everybody knew wouldn't work well on these tracks. Thanks, Wild J50. I I need to get more of the British locomotives running. I already ran the uh, Inner City 125, so that's why I didn't want to run that British locomotive again. And the Cheshire is also not working. I have a lot of engines I need to fix. That's the bottom line. Oh, man. Yeah, we'll run this around for one more lap, and that's uh, that's gonna be it. The Amtrak unit looks awesome. I agree. Um, Amtrak did a very good job with, uh, or not Amtrak, but Proto Two Thousand uh, did a very good job with their equipment in the early two thousands. So we're messing everything up. I think I'm uh, getting a little too tired. 
Huge fan of this channel. Thank you. Yeah, that one with a lot of weird problems. It was a bit of an odd one. All right, final lap. I was wondering about the crossing signal. I was uh, talking about that earlier in the live stream. It was basically a gift from my uh, grandparents. All right, well, I think that that is going to finish things off. I wanna thank you all so much for joining in this evening. It's been great uh, chatting with all of you and I hope you all enjoyed. I think we'll uh, cut things off there. Have a terrific night, everyone.